This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Mississippi Edition is your source to stay up to date on what's happening across the state. I'm Desiree Frazier. Tune in weekday mornings at 8.30 as we bring you in-depth interviews on some of the state's most pressing issues. From the Mississippi State Capitol to communities across the state, we keep you informed. Health care, education, and economic development are just some of the issues we tackle. Listen to Mississippi Edition Monday through Friday at 8.30 only on MPB Think Radio. From MPB Think Radio, this is Now You're Talking, the show about the most interesting people and stories of Mississippi. I am your host, Marshall Ramsey, and I'm an editorial cartoonist right here in Mississippi. Our guest today is Antonio Bennett, who will be performing at the 17th Annual Township Jazz Festival in Mississippi this weekend. She's the youngest daughter of Tony Bennett, and Antonio grew up in L.A., Los Angeles, and started singing with her father by the age of four. During that time, Antonio was surrounded by some of the greatest vocalists of all time, including Rosemary Clooney, Ella Fitzgerald, and Frank Sinatra. Known to get up and sing at her father's parties during the holidays, Antonio's passion for music grew even stronger. After high school, she attended the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston and then moved to New York City by the mid-2000s. Then she started performing as Tony's opening act at renowned venues throughout the world. This is Now You're Talking. It's a show about the most interesting people and stories in Mississippi. Hey, we got a great guest today. We have Antonio Bennett, and she will be performing at the 17th Annual Township Ship Jazz Festival right here in Mississippi coming up this weekend. She's the youngest daughter of Tony Bennett, and she grew up in Los Angeles and started singing with her father by age four. And during that time, Antonia was surrounded by her some of the greatest vocalists of all time, including Rosemary Clooney, Ella Fitzgerald, and Frank Sinatra. And she was also known to get up and sing with her father at parties during the holiday as well. Her passion then over time grew stronger. After high school, she attended the prestigious Berkeley College of Music in Boston and then moved to New York City by the mid-2000s and then started performing with her dad as the opening act in some of the greatest venues all around the world. Incredibly talented. Um, I want to thank Raphael Sims for making this possible. You know, he's been on the show before. We need to get him back on the show. Uh, local musician and talented guy as well. So uh, appreciate that. We're going to have her on the line in just a second. So that'll be fantastic. We'll talk with her. Happy April Fool's Day. I, it's hard to believe that we're already in April, that this year is flying by as fast as it is. Um, now, before anything else is said, I have to say something. Congratulations, Lacey, for Alabama making it to the Final Four. And no, that was not an April Fool's joke. I was about to say, it really is April Fool's uh, Day. Yeah, I know. It was so tempting for, you know, being a Tennessee fan and everything. And we lost, and I hate that. But, um, you know, the sun came up this morning, and I survived. So, Well, to be fair... Yes. You, you hit a brick wall with Zach Eady. So. Yeah, literally. And, uh, you know, the guy could not get a foul called against him either. So so there you go. So I'm going to, oh, oh, the next hour I'm going to complain about a basketball game. But no, it's good. I, I don't know about you, but I'm totally over April Fool's Day. Yeah. I, you and I were talking about this a little bit. I think it really hit during the pandemic, but it's kind of like the world has now become a 365 day long April Fool's Day joke. Right. Yeah. So it's like kind of like half the stuff I see on Twitter now, I'm just kind of like, are they serious? Yeah, exactly. And I feel that way about social media in general. Yes. And what's funny is when I think it's a joke and someone else doesn't and... <laughs> If that makes any sense. Like well, to, welcome to the world of editorial cartooning. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. So, you know, because people are like, oh, you're not fair. It's like, well, exactly. <laughs> That's yeah, what I well, do. Yeah. You're like, well, hey, what, what do you want from me? You had a good weekend, a good Easter? I had a fantastic Easter. I had a fantastic birthday weekend. That's right. You were 58 years old. I, I am 61 at this okay. point. Uh, but I also, <laughs> uh, quick plug, we did go uh, By ahead. the way, that is not old because I... I will be that soon. So oh, just, really? You know, just don't start with me. Oh, <laughs> no, never mind then. Okay. Uh, but uh, quick plug, we did drop the 10-minute timeout podcast on Friday. So Congratulations. That is, thank you very much. So that is live for your listening pleasure, should you choose to accept it, on the MPB website. I uh, I was like a proud friend. I even uh, sent it out on my Facebook. You are so kind, I Marsh. Know. All 16 the, of my readers. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot more than that. Okay, 17. Yeah, but fair it's enough. It's great. I, man, it was great for us. I 
had all three of my boys home. So it was Aww. fantastic. When you get them all under the house, in the roof at one time, that's just such a blessing. It really is. Yeah, so mama was happy. Especially when they're at that college age. It's or like, out of college at this point. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. I, I think one of your boys is still in school, right? Yeah, I got one in high school, one in college, and one that's out on his own. See, that's even more difficult to get everyone under the same Oh, as I like say, yeah, it's like herding cats. You can't, exactly. You can't just go to uh, your, your son's at oxford right now you can't just go to oxford and grab all three of them jump in the car you know you got to entice them with food and hugs well yeah no foods hugs and money but not in that (laughs) order right right no and i mean like yesterday afternoon he left early so he could go see his his girlfriend's it was on an internship in taiwan oh my god she's now back in birmingham he hadn't seen her like in three months because she's been in taiwan so Oh, she speaks fluent Mandarin. She's very, very smart. That must that must be so interesting for you as a father to hear, Dad. I gotta go see my uh, well, I did partner it. who. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did it back in the day. So it's it's kind of. I always remember my dad having this really sour look on his face when we would leave, Aww. and it's so funny because I get that same look now. Aww. But see. Spe- yeah. Now speaking of dads. You know, our guest today has a very famous dad. Our guest today has arguably one of the most famous dads. Just one of the coolest human beings I think that's ever walked on this earth, too. I've always been a huge fan. Me, too. And I found out something, too, that there is another famous Tony Bennett uh, from Mississippi, from Clarksdale, who played for the Green Bay Packers and for Indianapolis. And, folks, if you're listening and you're thinking we're talking about that Tony Bennett, we're not. We are not. We are we're talking not, about not, a <laughs> much, probably much more famous. A, a much Tony more Bennett. famous. A guy who, you know, hangs out with Lady Gaga. And there was a great picture. It was like Stevie Wonder, Lady Gaga, and Paul McCartney and Tony Bennett just hanging out together. Oh, my goodness. Too much talent for one photo. Willie Morris, the great, you know, writer and editor for Harper's. He was the youngest Harper's editor weekly editor of all time i got that out sorry that took me a second to get that out it's okay um his son david ray morris who's a wonderful photographer down in new orleans he and i were talking about that in an interview about what it was like being in that house and every great literary talent of all time was friends with willie morris and would walk through the house and he got to know all of them so i'm sitting there reading about our guest today's bio and about way she grew up we'll talk to her just in a second about it uh, about how literally she had some of the finest most talented you know not only musicians but artists and everything else but we're friends with her dad so she yeah. got to get to know them i mean what a wonderful way to grow up and what a wonderful way to develop your own art oh incredible yeah yeah, yeah. so definitely well without further ado we'll bring her in and tony I, I gotta admit i'm just absolutely thrilled that you're on because i've become a huge fan your music is wonderful and thank you for joining us today Oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet to say that. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh, sure, sure. And and I'm about to say welcome in advance to Mississippi. Yes, I can't wait. I, I did do a little bit of sleuthing that your mom was born in Leesville, Louisiana, which is 200 miles from here. So, <laughs> right. so, so you're practically family. We're going to claim you. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah, you're going to find that out real quick when you get here that, you know, everybody's going to say, you know, who's your mom and where you go to church, and you're going to get all those questions. But um, the, the the festival, the, the 17th Annual Township Jazz Festival, it's hard to believe it's been 17 years. It seems like they just started it. But it's just such a wonderful event. You're going to be headlining. You're going to be with Jason Marsalis. It sounds like uh, Marsalis. That's right. Yeah, thank you, as I forget how to talk on a radio show, which is really always kind of clumsy. But um Anyway, congratulations for coming. It's going to be a wonderful concert, and you just absolutely have a divine voice, so it's going to be great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to coming out and playing. It's going to be such a pleasure. You, um, gosh, I mean, your dad passed away last year, and you opened up for him for years, and now you're kind of out on your own, and you're doing a lot of traveling. You've got a wonderful album out Um which is Embrace Me, which absolutely I love. The song Right on Time is a fantastic. If you're having a bad day, put it on, put your headphones on and go for a walk and listen to it, and you'll find yourself walking even faster. It's just such a good song. Um, so you're kind of getting the career going back, going a little bit and doing a little bit of traveling around and performing still. That's right. I mean, you know, COVID was difficult for a lot of musicians, and now things are opened up again and we're, able to go out and perform and do things again so it's been really nice to to get back out there and do what I love I think that honestly that that was the longest time I've ever stayed at home so 
this is such a pleasure to really be able to go out and do the thing that I love to do and be in front of people. It's just, you know, the thrill, it's thrilling for me. That's been really part of your life since you were uh, like four or five years old. That's right. Yeah. You know, I, I used to I'll go ahead. No, I, I used to, my dad used to invite me up on stage when I was a little kid and, you know, it just, it became like the natural progression of things that I would just get out there and do uh, do more and more songs and then and and then do my own shows. So uh, I've been very blessed like that. You were singing Hokey Pokey, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and Putting on the Ritz. I take it you don't sing the Hokey Pokey anymore. <laughs> well, I do at home with my with my. I did a, a couple of years ago with my daughter. Now she's getting a little too big. She's eight, but you know. We we sing all kinds of things at home. Oh, please don't blink. She's going to grow up faster than you know it. Yeah, it's true. So she sings too, doesn't she? Well, yes. She's she's uh, you know, I think all kids are talented, and they all have kind of rhythm and music in their bones. And until they start comparing themselves to other people, you know, they've all kind of got it. And um, you know, we encourage all kinds of creativity in this household. So you're you were a painter a too, fun. weren't you? Didn't you paint when you were younger? When I was a kid, yeah, I did a lot of that. Oh wow, wow! I know. I love. There was a great quote I saw from your dad talking about just like in 1985, it's saying, "This one has so much talent. She's a wonderful painter, sings terrific. All my kids are happy and healthy and and have talent, but this one ha- this one here um, captures." Uh, just that talent and I was like thinking wow how cool is it to have your dad be able to say something like that when you're young (laughs) so sweet yeah he always encouraged people he always encouraged young people to go after their talents and and be creative and he was always on the positive side of things with people because he really did see talent in places where other people maybe would overlook yeah, I think what's really wonderful and just reading, all, doing all the research and reading and everything, talking about you talking about him, was that all the things that I thought he would be like, he actually was like. I mean, that's really cool. Sometimes that doesn't happen with celebrities, and it's just neat to see that. Um, and I think the one moment between y'all that I remember reading about was the fact that y'all would go ice skating every, during the holidays every year in Central Park. That's right. That's amazing. Yeah, he loved to ice skate. I guess he was a, I think a, I think a speed skater when he was a kid. He he raced on ice, and so I think so. It was either that or I believe it was speed skating. So he loved to skate even when he was a kid. And um, through the years, we would go skating in Central Park. I mean, he was very athletic even way into his older years. He was playing tennis for a very long time in his older years and um, always working out and just doing things. He loved to be athletic. It sounds like he truly loved life. He did. He was very blessed. Definitely on that. Talk a little bit about, of course, you were talking about as a kid, and I was thinking about that too because, I mean, I'm – I'm a cartoonist. I paint. I, I do the arts. Now, you said every child could sing. I, I might be the the sole example of someone who couldn't sing because um, they hear me sing in church and they turn around and tell me to stop. So, I mean, I, I don't sing well. Well, they did that to him. You know, I mean, they, they kicked him out of the choir at one point. They called him the black crow of the choir. They gave him because he had a raspy voice. And they considered his brother the real singer, his brother... Um, they called his brother the young Peru, so he was singing at the Met, and they always thought that uh, he, that that his brother was the singer. But he actually, you know, he had his own thing going, and 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 later on was able to develop it. So you just never know, and there's always going to be people who say you can't do something, but it's not always true, you know. It's just that some people don't have the foresight to be able to see the thing that it is that you're able to do, you know, and it's just like anything, you know, everybody says, oh, that won't work and whatever, but eventually you only need one person to say it's going to work and then everything turns around. So. 
Amen. My dad did the same thing to me. I remember walking up to him when I was eight and saying to him, I want to be an editorial cartoonist, which was probably a pretty weird thing for a kid to say to their dad. And dad just looked at me and he said, and you're going to be the best one ever. I mean, and that lit, that a, yeah, it lit a fire on me. I, you know, obviously I'm not yet, but I'm working on it. But the fact was that got me through a lot of things. And it, it sounds like that your dad just had this belief inside of him that he was going to do it. And he kind of manifested his way into becoming the, the legend that he became. That's right. You know, I mean, I think, you know, he loved painting. He, that was his passion and he thought that that was going to be his main career, but he never stopped painting. He did it his whole life and he always loved to do it. And he, he he uh, he loved that just as much as singing, and he would go on the road with us kids, and he would be performing in different places, and he'd always have a set of paint brushes, and he'd pull out his his uh, his paints and his and and work on whatever he could from wherever he was. So on the road, he would mostly bring watercolors and stuff because that medium dries really quickly. I think the point is, is that if you love something, you find a way to do it and you keep doing it, regardless of what other people say, because it's, it becomes a part of you and it's a way that you can express yourself. And it just, it's important to hold on to the things that you love to do, you know? We're talking with Antonio Bennett. Uh, she will be here coming up this weekend at the 17th Annual Township Jazz Festival. Uh, looking forward to that. It's, of course, coming up on Saturday. Uh, oh, I think you're spot on about that. I just think that's wonderful that he would he would paint on the road as well. When you were a kid, and, and I mean, like I said, I kind of figured I wanted to be a cartoonist at eight. I can't imagine. You were singing pretty early. Did you think that that was going to be your path, or did you think you were going to be something other than a singer? Well, I don't know. You know, I was inundated with a lot of the arts. As I said, my parents gave me really good exposure to all the arts. And um, I knew that I wanted to do something creative, but it took time for me to really decide to be a singer. Singing was just something that I always did and loved to do, but I also loved to dance and paint and, you know, and all of those things as well. So it just but the music really became the natural progression of things because it was so much a big part of my life. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think if you love doing something, it makes putting in the time and the hours that you need to do it to become great easier. Absolutely. You know, I mean, my dad used to say that he never worked a day in his life. And I understand it because when you do something that you love, it's such a blessing. There's so many people that do things that they don't like for a living and they have to do that in order to survive. And so whatever it is that people have to do, but I think it's important for, for, for one to find a way to do the things that they love in their daily life. You know, I, I love live music and um, I, I just think that being able to get up on a stage and be known to perform like that is such a gift. You do a wonderful job. I even read that you had stage fright, which I cannot believe because it does not come across at all. When, when you sing, I'm sure at this point you don't, but you know, at, at one point in your career, you did your dad, when he would get on a stage, he could fill a arena with just the, you could tell he loved what he did and it just radiated and filled the whole arena. Yeah. He's, he's something, well, that's so sweet of you to say. I think that a lot of performers, you know, they get a little nervous before they go on stage. And I think it's important. My dad used to call it butterflies. And I think, you know, it means that you care about what you're doing and, and, and that you're taking care and, and that it's, you know, it's such a blessing that you're doing it. So it all kind of comes out in the wash. You trained at Berkeley, which is arguably the finest music school. And you, you studied vocal. Um, and it's incredible. And I was watching an interview during the pandemic where you actually had gone back and taken some more classes there a little bit. Talk about that, that, that Berkeley education and how it's influenced your career. Sure. Um, well, a lot of the musicians I met there, I still know and play with today and the camaraderie that, that happened while I was there, but also it was really a great place for me to really understand that this is my path. I, um, I got to uh, work with world-renowned musicians and artists there, and um, 
and 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 along the lines collected a few incredible mentors that I still keep in touch with today. And um, I wouldn't have trade that time for anything. And I think that, you know, when you do something that you love, you just always keep working at it. There's always something more to do. So I did go back to school during the pandemic um, and started taking uh, different classes. Uh, I took a, um, a um, film scoring, a, a, a music film scoring class on the, the history of film scoring uh, music. I took a, a music publishing class. I, I, I took an English class, you know, and I, I just love like always continuing to, to uh, look for new things and, and learn more. It's so important. You had a good example. Like I said, your dad was really good about growing and changing and trying new things. And I mean, that's a heck of an example because it seems like I know the music industry and of course I came out of the newspaper business and the internet has blown up so many things and changed so many things. And it, it just sounds like that the music industry that you're in today is much different than the one that when you first started out in your career. And it, you know, it's it's good to be able to go back in and do a little bit more training. I think the song you're you're a songwriter, so it sounds like the publishing uh, class was probably pretty interesting. Yeah, um, I am, and you know, it, it's so interesting because you can write these songs and and really have no idea how it works, and um, it's nice to get down to the nitty gritty, and and also laws and everything are changing all the time, so it's good to stay updated. Definitely on that as well. Right now, you're listening to jazz singer Antonio Bennett. You're listening to Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. Antonio is the headliner at the Township Jazz Festival, which will be right here in Ridgeland, Mississippi this weekend. The event is this Saturday, like I said, April 6th from 11 to 7. Really excited that she's going to be in town. Uh, Antonio, thank you so far. The interview has been great. Thank you for joining us. Is this the first time you've been to Mississippi? No, I've been to Mississippi before with my dad many times. Oh, that's right. Because uh, the host before us, they, they went to go see your dad. So you probably opened up for him, I, I would imagine, at that concert. That's right. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Well, did you get to kind of look around a little bit or was it in and out just to, to kind of get a, a, a feel for the land? Most of the time that I've been in Mississippi, it's been just a uh, kind of passing through. But my grandmother actually was born in Mississippi. Oh, there you go, your family. All right, you're on my mother's side. Yeah, that's cool. What What do you know where? I don't actually. That's a great question. I should ask my mom. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, no, that's that was the first question I got when I moved here. It's like you know, you know, who's your mom and that type of thing and so forth. And I found out my great great grandfather lived here, and everybody's like, oh well, welcome. But the one thing, <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, I moved here from San Diego, so it was like, okay, I kept walking into automatic opening doors because they open slower here. But um, I came to love the arts, the arts scene here. We have absolutely some of the finest writers and musicians and so forth. And of course, you know, that's where the blues came from. That's where country music. I mean, you know, we had Hi. Elvis. We have so much music uh, talented here. So it's like, I love like on the show. A lot of times I'll get musicians in because I think you guys are just great storytellers and the the pluck that it takes to become a musician to be able to stand on that stage I mean you got to really want it and be willing to do the work so I just always by the time at the end of the interview you end up motivated just talking to what you know musicians like yourself and I, I found that when I was going through reading about your story too because it's just like you know you really learned a lot of really great professional just little tidbits from your dad, like show up, make sure you're on time, be a professional and so forth. And then you kind of have done things your own way too. It's just a great mix. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely have learned a lot from him and from the people who came before me. I, you know, I think that it's so, we, we, I was so blessed to come up in a time where there were so many incredible artists. A lot of them are gone now, like, Peggy Lee and Rosie Clooney and Bill Evans and Dizzy Gillespie and all those people were around when when I was a kid and Ella Fitzgerald. I mean, I was very, very blessed to meet some incredible performers at the top of their field. And I don't take it for granted. I know that it was such a special time. 
Oh, definitely. And, and that's what's so cool. Like, I can imagine, you know, I, Rosemary Clooney always seemed like she was just a lot of fun and very interesting. You actually got to know her as a human being. And same with Ella Fitzgerald, because they, like said, they would be in your house. And, I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm kind of geeking out a little bit, the fact that you even just got to meet the folks that you got to meet. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty incredible when I think back about it. But, you know, all of those people were so special. But the other thing is, that they were all really human beings and they all kind of, you know, they had, uh, they were just normal people like everybody else in a lot of ways that just happened to be extraordinarily talented and at the top of their craft, you know, and there's a lot to be learned by that. I mean, you know, there's that old saying like show business are the best people, you know, a lot of, you'll hear a lot of show business people say like, uh, you know, show, show, show business people are the best people in the world. But it is a family, too, you know, especially at that time. They really took care of one another and made sure that they were all right. They had each other to bounce back on. They had a real community, and um, and community is real important. I could imagine. And, and like I said, just growing up and, and going to high school where you went to high school with or just seeing, you know, famous people going to the, to the mailbox. I mean, it was just I would imagine that was quite a, a wonderful time to grow up. Yes, I think so. Definitely. You you had touched a little bit, like I said, that, you know, you you were around Rosemary Clooney, you are around Ella Fitzgerald, and then, like you said, like you mentioned before, you go to Berkeley and you're around suddenly musicians your own age. So that, that had to be a little bit of a brain freeze initially, but a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time there, and, um, you know, and I I think that there's so much to gain, and I, and I, and I love – as I said, I love going back. Now I'm doing it online, but, you know, I love uh, kind of doing some of the online learning, too. I mean, there's there's so much to gauge there, um, and it's just an incredible blessing to be able to have these resources, to be able to do that. I mean, is in what you can do now and how much you can find on the Internet and learn, even on your own, is just so incredible that you have all these resources at your fingertips now. I know. It, you know, there was so many bad things about the pandemic, but there were a lot of uh, silver linings out there. And I, and I think about that a lot of times, you know, I, re, I got very good at Zoom, for instance, and being able to deal with that uh-huh. and doing TV interviews via Zoom, doing all the different things I do and being able to get my cartoons out there and being able to give away. I know you probably perform on online for people and you don't know how much that probably meant to everybody because I know a lot of my favorite singers and uh, you know, I would see them performing concerts, and it really lifted spirits. So it was kind of a time when we were able to give our talents and be able to help other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk a little bit about uh, the performance this weekend and, and your set and so forth. Is a lot of it going to come from your new album? So some of the songs will be from my new record. You know, I'm also really excited to work with Jason Marsalis. I've worked with him before. He's just a lovely man and a fantastic talent. And so that's really thrilling. And, um, you know, it's going to be a combination of American Songbook and some of my originals. And um, I'm, I, uh, I'm super happy to be able to share it with everyone. Oh, that'll be great. When you write songs, do you write alone or do you usually write with partners? Both, but I mean, I love to collaborate with other people. It's so much fun, and um, you, you you get so much from working with a the with another partner. I think you know collaboration is really key. Um, it's so nice to be able to find somebody that you really gel with and make something new. I would think that just as a musician, just being able to collaborate with people in general would, would make it so much fun because it seems like, cause I, I was watching a video with you with less, the legendary Les Paul. Right. And number one, you were busting his chops initially. I think there was a wrong key or something. And you said that I was like, okay, that's pretty impressive. But number two, it just, it just mashed up to make a really beautiful song. I mean, it was just wonderful. And I know that had to be fun for you. Les was a tremendous human being, and he was he was my ultimate teacher. I just loved him. He was a friend, and he he really helped me so much as a performer. I would go up there on Monday nights and sit in with him, and he would just you know bring me along. And uh, 
it was like taking show business 101 classes with him. He really like uh, knew so many things about how to do and what to do and when to do it. It sounds like you got your, your degree from Berkeley and maybe your master's, master's and your doctorate from all the people you've gotten to work with. Yeah, I certainly uh, have my uh, doctorate in hanging out, that's for sure. I love that. A doctorate in hanging out. That's fantastic. What are some of, I mean, some of, the, some of your best memories of, of some of the people, obviously, you talked about less and, and the influence he had on you. But I, I would think just getting to spend time with your dad as an adult what had to have been something you'll always look back on and just smile about. You know, some of my best memories with him really are things like going to museums and, um, you know, wherever we went from the time I was a kid and well into my adult years, we, whatever city we were in, we would go to a museum and look at art and go check out music. And he really... Um, love to do that and we had a lot in common we liked a lot of the same things and so we would always do that together and um one of the museums in new york that was so great is the frick museum it's a small museum um and they have a lot of Velasquez artwork we would go there often i mean we had been there i don't know maybe hundreds of times through the years <laughs> but uh we always kept going back because we liked it. There was so much to see. They have a lot of the classic Velasquez paintings there in that small collection. And it was always such a pleasure to spend time with him in that way. And people don't generally don't realize how wonderful it is to actually see original paintings and, and how wonderful it is. And for me, you know, I, I paint and, and I love painting. And uh, I've learned more just by going to, you know, Chicago to the Field Museum or going to, to, to Washington to the Portrait Gallery or seeing an original uh, John Sargent Singer. You know, when you see the, the actual artwork up close, it's just absolutely brilliant. Yes, but it, it is. B- but it was also about the time with him, too. Yes. Just being able to spend that time together was so important. My and this is something I really, frankly, don't talk about too much because I know it's it's not easy to talk about. And um, my dad had dementia also, and a very similar type track that your dad had. He he never got angry, he never got upset, and um, thankfully, and he kind of the best parts of him kind of hung around till the, the very end. And he 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 died much younger. He was like eighty one when he passed. But um, dad was all a very funny man, and he was very funny till the very end. And that was a wonderful thing that he didn't lose that. Your dad's uh, battle was very public, obviously, and um, and to me, it's so incredible seeing the power of music. Uh, something for, mm-hmm. and for uh, I mean, there's a lot of people listening right now. They're going through this. The the the, the what you and I both went through on uh, that. Talk about that a little bit and about his love for music and how he was able to hang on to it even toward the very end. That was just, it was incredible. Even when he stopped touring, he was still, uh, music was still part of his life. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, it was always incredible to see that he would, you know, when, once he was on stage, it was like he was himself, you know, and he would just brighten up and he knew all of the lyrics and everything sometimes in the later period of his um singing he would sing the same song twice for example but nobody cared because he sang it so beautifully and you know and loved doing it so much that they just i think the audience just felt like they were getting a reprieve of of something and um he he was very blessed in that way to be able to do that. And even uh, during COVID, when he finally stopped doing public performances, um, you know, his piano player would come over to the house a few days a week and he would run through the whole show. And he was very blessed to be able to um, know, still have all of that music in his, in his, heart and in his and in his mind and um they say that it's the last thing to go that that music that musical part is the last thing to go in the memory and um 
it seems that it, that was definitely true in his in his case. Isn't that wonderful too? That that was the thing that was such a big part of his life too. That so he was able to uh-huh. to continue. That was good for y'all too. I mean, that was probably good for your your family. And um, that was wonderful. I know Glenn Campbell came through on his final tour. He came through here and played, and it was just incredible how he could just play the guitar like you know like he could back in the 60s and 70s it was just it was just incredible and it was just uplifting and wonderful too mm-hmm. yes and i know dad you know in dad's nursing co- nursing home where he was toward the very end they did do music therapy and, and i'm glad to see that there's a lot of research going on to, to help other people that are going through um, alzheimer's with music therapy absolutely I mean, music therapy is so incredible because even in situations where people are nonverbal, they get they're getting a tremendous results. And um, you know, I know for myself that listening to music can automatically make me feel better. And uh, you know, I mean, therapy's great too. I mean, going talking about your problems that's really great. But sometimes, you know, just changing the mood can do a lot to kind of loosen you up and help you to see things in a different way. Definitely on that. Talk about a little bit about your music. Um, you know, when you write, and obviously jazz is kind of a, it's a great genre for you because it's kind of like where you came from and you're able to, oh, right. to do that. And I mean, I have a feeling that you could sing anything you want to sing. Your voice is just that good. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. I mean, I like that music because it it speaks to me, and it's to me it's some of the most beautiful music that was ever written. I mean, but I also grew up with it, so for me, it, that's like a home cooked meal, you know. I but um, I like a lot of different genres, and I I listen to everything, and uh, you never know where you're going to find a little gem, you know, and. Uh, I think it's really important to take inspiration from everything. Who are some of the musicians? And obviously I know the ones that you grew up with and literally, literally grew up with uh, in your, in your household or, or your inspirations. Are there any uh, from today that, that inspire you and make you think, okay, I'd like to do a little bit of this or that's really good or, cause I'm that way too. I mean, I've, I've got the cartoonists that I think are the ones that kind of brought me to the dance and there's, I see new work now that I'm thinking, okay, yeah, sure. I need to raise my game a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, there's artists like Sarah Bareilles, who's just a tremendous songwriter and she's always doing great things. Um, Rufus Wainwright, who who's so creative and he's always, you know, um, finding different ways to to put his music out and and um, and and push the creativity envelope. And there's just so many. I think there's so many. There's more incredible artists than there ever was. I mean, the competition is so like you know steep now. But at the same time, you know, it's so great because again, we have access to everything, and uh, you can just learn from so many different people i know it, it, you're right about that it seems like there's so many and i couldn't even imagine trying to come up into the business today uh, last night my wife and i were sitting there watching american idol which we we watch from time to time i mean every one of those those singers those i say kids because some of them were literally were 14 and 16 years old that their voices were just off the charts i mean when i was 14 or 16 years old i mean i was like i was ready to drive and that was about the only thing i was thinking about you know, I can't even imagine, you know, being that far ahead of the game and so forth on that. Mm-hmm. There's a girl named Georgia Cecily, and I think she's out of Scotland. She's someone to watch. Um, she did a record during COVID. I think that her music is really quite beautiful, and uh, I think she's talented. I, I, I hope she does a lot of great things because uh, her music really inspired me during the pandemic. Yeah. Def, talk, talk about about her a little bit more because I really would like to, to to look her up. Sure, um, I just you know randomly found her during the pandemic, but she, I, I don't know very much about her. I know that she she made this record um, during the pandemic that she was going to go to law school and then she decided to become a musician and says that she's clearly a smart girl. Um, she. Uh, 
she's, um, I think her father was a pianist, um, a jazz musician, and um, she got a grant to make her record from a woman's organization. She also has all these really beautiful music videos up online that I think she got another Scottish woman who is a um, filmmaker to do all of these really lovely looking music videos. And she kind of cross-pollinates between jazz and and contemporary music. Um, And she collaborated with her pianist on all of the songs that were on that record, that were like her debut record. So I think they co-wrote them all together. And that's all I really know. She plays around a lot in the UK. I see her sometimes that she's posting that she's going to play at Ronnie Scott for places like that. And uh, I know she has been here to the States to perform as well. But I just think she's a tremendous talent. I really hope she does more and more. And the, the, the wonderful thing, a lot of people talk about how the Internet's changed the music business, changed everything, to be honest with you. But the fact that was, here was during the pandemic when we had all this time on our hands, literally, you know, it gave us a chance to slow down and look around. And because of the Internet, we were able to find talent like that and to find someone who could literally change our mood, change our life and so forth. I mean, as crazy as it has turned your business and my business, it also there is a lot of advantages for a young artist to be able to put their work out there and to be seen and to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is incredible. And of course, um, of course, you promoting a new album and, and getting that out there. You worked. Did you work on the album during the pandemic? The Embrace Me record? No, that one I did some time ago, and it's just a re-release. Oh, but okay. I do have a, a new record that's in the can that I that I was working on throughout the pandemic, and um, I'm due to release it at some point this year. And, um, you know, I think that in a lot of ways the pandemic was great because we, a lot there was nothing else to do. There were... There were no going on the road and doing shows, so it was a good time to kind of focus in on on the craft and kind of um, internalize some of the music and and uh, kind of mar- marinate on it. And um, you know, like you said, there were good things that came out of it too. Definitely, um, definitely looking forward to the new album. And I apologize about that because I did know that I I saw that embrace me, and I thought it's like, wait a minute, was it 2014 or is it 2024? And I kind of wondered why Right on Time wasn't on there, and that explains it. But Right on Time is will that be on the new album? That's going to be on the new record, yeah. Oh, it's such a good song. Thank you. It really is. You wrote that one. Do you wrote that one, right? I did yeah. with uh, Chris Goldmacher. That, that's, I mean, like I said, uh, just the tempo, and it's just so upbeat, and it's very positive. Uh, it's just a great song. Thank you. You're listening to Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, and we're back with the daughter of the legendary Tony Bennett, Antonio Bennett, who is a guest of honor at the upcoming Township Jazz Festival in Ridgeland, which will be coming up on Saturday. So uh, we'll make sure that you know how to get tickets and so forth as well. And I put up on Facebook that she was going to be on and got a really nice comment from Angela Bryan, and I thought it worth repeating. I heard Antonia sing several years ago at a concert on the coast where she appeared with her dad. I took my mom to hear them. Antonia has a beautiful voice, and it was so special to hear her with my mom. Great memory with my mom. So there you go. And that's a big part of what you do is you make memories with with your music. Oh, well, that's really sweet. I make them for myself. I only hope that other people uh, take away something good from it as well. Well, obviously they did. Angela uh, was was a very nice voice. I just thought I'd share that with you to get to hear what an impact that you make on that. And I know okay. you're looking forward to this weekend, and thank you so much for coming into town. Thank you for having me. This has been such a pleasure, and I really look forward to performing in Jackson and getting a chance to, to, to – uh, do the thing that I love to do. Thanks yeah. for having no, me. No, that's the thing. we got a couple more minutes. I'm not going to cut you loose. Is there anything that, that you would like to touch on that I have not mentioned? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I'm thinking that you've just lived an incredible life and gotten to do a little. You get to do what you love to do every day, and at the end of the day, that's pretty in- inspiring. Um, a big part of it is, though, that, you know, where do you, I mean, where do you see your career going? 
Well, you know, I just want to keep doing what I do. I want to keep creating, keep performing. I want to be able to reach as many people as I can and um, embrace my fans and um, work with some tre- tremendous artists. I'd love to do something and bring records at some point. Maybe I could, you know, work with someone like a Vince Mendoza on that. That would be so lovely if I had my brothers. Um that would be something that I would really love to do. What does a typical day look like for you? Well, a typical day is uh, I get up. I, I try to get my daughter out the door for school. Hey, good luck with um, that. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> and that's always, you know, interesting. Um, we said it's like doing that, D-Day every single day. <laughs> So, you know, and then, you know, I didn't really think through that waking up early thing after a, a late night show, you know, oh, wow. when I became a mom. But you you kind of adjust. Um, I'm up real early these days. Um, and then I usually uh, go go to the gym, do a little workout, come back, um, practice some piano, do my vocal scales. And then usually I'll have a some sort of a session, either um, either like a recording session that somebody else has actually hired me to do or uh, one of my own, like doing my own music or uh, a rehearsal, something like this. So then I usually hop in the car, drive to wherever that is, and then I rush back in time to get here to pick up my daughter for school. For school. <laughs> and then after that, I usually... Uh, drive her to whatever activity she has and then do that. And then there's, uh, you know, the whole bedtime routine of uh, getting ready for for dinner and homework and uh, bath time and all of that. And then um, usually after that all happens, I'll either go out and see a concert or I will um, work a little bit more on my craft and then go to sleep. <laughs> No, no, you don't go to sleep. Sounds like you collapse. It sounds like (laughs) that happens too. I mean, sometimes you know, as you're bent over the kitchen table with your face down on the table drooling because you've like collapsed helping, you know, trying to get everything lined up for the next day. Yeah. Well, I mean, luckily, I have a very capable husband who kind of takes over when I can no longer, you know, keep going. So um, that's also great to have a partner that's really there for you that can help you you know do the things that that uh, that you love to do and 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 uh, just be a partner for you you know that's a tremendous gift amen it sounds like you have a keeper I, i've found we have three boys and 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 my wife teaches so she always has to be out of the house really early so it was like every morning before seven o'clock there was always gnashing of teeth and screaming and everything else trying to get everybody pushed out and i and i learned very quickly that if you get a lot of the stuff done the night before it makes for a healthy and happy marriage it sure does yeah absolutely and i was just thinking about you literally you you were getting up now at when you used to go to bed Oh, yeah, sure. That's true. I mean, because I like to have a little bit of peace and quiet before everybody wakes up. I like to have my coffee and just kind of, yeah, right. that's like my version of meditation is having my coffee in silence, you know, uh, uh, before everybody wakes up. I think a lot of moms right now are nodding and saying, you know what, she's really cool. And and I I, oh. I, I appreciate you being on today and taking it, because I know this is early in L.A., and I appreciate you calling in and, and look forward to this weekend. How can folks find out more about you? They can go to my website, or they can go to uh, Instagram or Facebook and find me there. Um, and uh, they'll, they'll always be postings of my upcoming shows. I'm not always this nice, but I really, truly love your music and have really enjoyed learning a lot about your life. It's been wonderful, and I thank you for sharing it with us today. 
Well, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. A special thanks to our special guest for joining us today. And if you'd like to hear this or any past episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app or on our MPB public media app. Now You're Talking is a production of MPB Think Radio with episode and podcast produced by the wonderful, amazing Lacey Alexander. Stay tuned for Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit coming up next and join us again next Monday at 10 a.m. I'm Marshall Ramsey. Y'all have a great week. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.